There is no shortage of creepy and haunted objects in this world. In fact, they are so common that there are some museums that are pretty much dedicated to housing them for the world to see. So with that in mind, welcome back friends. I'm your host Kennedy and get ready for today's countdown because these are the top 10 terrifying objects in haunted museums. Starting us off at number 10 is the death van. During the mid to late 90s, Dr. Jack Kavorkian became a notorious figure after being convicted for second degree homicide for his role in the voluntary euthanasia of over 130 patients. Through the trial, his reputation earned him the nickname Dr. Death and he ended up being sentenced to 10 years for his deeds. Now, despite the negative narrative, the doctor always fought back, claiming to be aiding the terminally ill end their lives on their own terms and had set up an old 1968 Volkswagen van to get the job done. Now, whether you believe he was innocent or not, the fact of the matter is that at least 130 people died in this van. So naturally, it has developed quite the reputation as a haunted object. Object. So much so that at one point in time it was being sold on eBay for nearly $4,000. However, nowadays you can find it at the eternally haunted Zach Baggins Museum where the ghosts of those who died are said to wander the museum spooking visitors at all hours of the day. Coming up next at number 9 is Wheelie. Some say it's a stuffed dog, while others say it looks more like a sheep. But either way, it's an old, creepy, haunted toy from the 19th century that can be found in the Prince Edward Island Museum in Canada. Nicknamed Wheelie due to the creaky wheels the stuffed animal sits on top of, this nearly 200 year old toy was found lying inside the walls of the Yeo house while construction was underway. According to staff, the disfigured sheep dog toy Toy was simply lying on the ground inside the walls and so they decided to keep it and put it out on display for their visitors which would be all well and fine except for the fact that it very well may have been hidden in a wall for a reason. Apparently Wheelie is known to wander around all by himself and is often found hiding in a different spot than where he was left the night before. Which if horror movies have taught me anything is never a good sign. Coming in at number 8, hair. Now I will admit this is not a single object that can be found in a haunted museum but it is definitely an exhibit that will make your skin crawl. Inside the Avanos Hair Museum in Turkey, yes, you heard that right, is literally a floor to ceiling cave-like room with countless little snippets of hair surrounding you at every angle. In fact, to be exact, there are 16,000 different hair samples adorning the walls. I'm sure you're wondering how such a museum began in the first place. Well, the common folklore is that a local potter once asked a dying friend to leave him a snippet of her hair to remember her by. The friend obliged and cut a small piece of her locks for the potter. From there, the potter placed the gift in his shop and apparently this inspired visitors who began following in her footsteps and gifting locks to be displayed in his shop along with the original until eventually the shop was overrun by hair. And don't worry, if you want in on the fun or creepiness depending on your feeling about hair, guests are encouraged to leave behind a little sample themselves. Just ask the staff for some scissors and your wishes will be granted. Coming in at number 7, The Dark Mirror. Found in the Museum of the Paranormal and Occult, this dark mirror is said to show you much more than you will ever want to see. The Mobile Museum obtained this cursed mirror from the original owner who claimed to have purchased it while attending a psychic fair in the Columbus area. Now there are lots of alleged cursed mirrors out there, some said to be haunted by demons who escape in the night torturing whoever possesses the cursed glass. which don't get me wrong, is definitely terrifying. However, this particular object has more of an eerie, foreboding quality that is sure to send anyone who looks into it into a spiral. According to the museum, those that dare gaze into the cursed mirror claim to be struck with very upsetting visions. Some even reported ghastly sightings such as their own corpse staring back at them. Coming in at number 6 is Einstein's brain. 
In the famous Medical Muter Museum in Philadelphia is none other than the brain of world famous theoretical physicist Albert Einstein. Or at least parts of it are there. And almost as peculiar as having sections of his brain preserved in glass slides and displayed is the story of how the genius brain wound up at the museum in the first place. Apparently, after he died in 1955, pathologist Thomas Harvey was the one to perform his autopsy. But unbeknownst to the family, he decided to remove Einstein's brain for preservation in the hopes that scientists of the future could study it to determine what made Einstein so intelligent. Eventually, after much reluctance, Einstein's son agreed to allow the brain to be kept under one very strict condition, that it be used for scientific research. Now, with permission from his next of kin, Harvey went forward slicing the brain into 240 pieces, making sure to preserve each piece very carefully. Over the next few decades, Harvey would send bits and pieces to researchers upon request and eventually donated the rest to this very museum it resides in today. Coming in at number five is Annabelle. Okay, I know we're all pretty aware of the cursed demon doll, but I just couldn't help it. I mean, she is one of the most terrifying things you can find in a museum after all. Although nowadays she's locked up tight in the famous paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren's occult museum. This wasn't always the case. Back in 1970, Annabelle was gifted to a nursing student named Donna, but it didn't take long before Donna and her roommate Angie knew that something was off. After about a month, the roommates began finding disturbing messages lying around their apartment, warning them to help Lou. Lou was one of their friends who had apparently warned the girls of the doll since day one. Eventually, things got so creepy that the women contacted a medium who told them to not be afraid that the doll was merely possessed by a young girl named Annabelle Higgins, who had died on the property years prior. The medium advised them that Annabelle felt really safe here and would like to stay, so they agreed. But that was all part of the demon's plan. Not long after, Lou stayed over and when he awoke from a nightmare, he found he couldn't move his body. And then like straight out of a horror movie, he says Annabelle walked up his body and strangled him until he passed out. After that, the girls contacted a priest who put them in touch with the paranormal investigators, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who discredited the medium and said it was in fact a dangerous demon possessing the doll. However, even now, despite being locked up, the doll should be deeply feared. It was reported one man who visited the museum mocked the doll and only a few days later died after losing control of his motorbike. Next up at number four, the Hands Resist Him painting. As far as paintings go, the Hands Resist Him created by William Stoneham in 1972 is probably considered one of the most haunted pieces in the whole world. Stoneham claims the inspiration for the piece came from an old photograph from his early years. And somehow, over time, the painting landed in the hands of a California couple. As the story goes, the sellers who auctioned it on eBay in 2000 kept the painting in their four-year-old's room. But one morning, the girl claimed that the people in the painting were not letting her sleep at night. So for the girl's peace of mind, they set up a motion sensor camera to prove that no monsters were coming out of the painting. However, to their surprise, they captured some truly frightening activity. They awoke to find photos of the boy crawling from the painting, and others where the doll's face had changed to a very angry disposition while holding a weapon. Not only that, it's also rumored to have been responsible for the death of three men who came into contact with it at one time or another. Today, you can find it in the back room of Smith's Perception Fine Art Gallery in Grand Rapids, Michigan. But be warned, those that witness the painting often complain of nausea or extreme physical pain while in its presence. Coming in at number three, Ed Gein's Cauldron. 
So a little backstory, Ed Gein, aka the Butcher of Plainfield, was a killer and body snatcher between 1947 to 1957. Gein grew up very religious, his mother was a devout Lutheran who taught her sons that women were inherently promiscuous and instruments of the devil. Gein became very attached to his mother arguably a little too much, and after his father and brother both died, Gein became his mother's primary caregiver. However, after she died in 1945, something snapped and he became a totally different person. He began to visit the graveyards at night, digging up middle-aged women that had similarities to his deceased mother, before bringing the bodies home and mutilating them, using their skin to make covers for his furniture, masks out of their faces, or using the bones for decoration and dishes. Even creepier was when he began creating an entire woman suit from various different exhumed bodies as he wanted to be able to become his mother and literally be in her skin. It is believed that this cauldron was used by Gein to not only store the stolen body parts but primarily to boil them so that the skin could be removed from the bone more easily. Nowadays this cursed cauldron is found at the haunted Zach Bagan Museum and is definitely one of the most terrifying things found inside. Next up at number two Peter Curtin's head. Inside the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Wisconsin is one of the most haunting objects you could come across, the severed head of a dead man. But who's the guy? Well, none other than the vampire of Dusseldorf, Peter Curtin. To give you a bit of context, Peter Curtin is widely considered one of the most cruel, sick, and deranged men of the 20th century. Between 1913 to 1929, he was a rampant killer and predator, responsible for the death of 10 people, on top of another 31 attempted killings among his 68 crimes total. While in court, he received the nickname Vampire of Dusseldorf for reasons I'm sure you can imagine, and after freely confessing to all his crimes with no remorse for his cruelties, he was sentenced to execution via the guillotine. But his atrocities did not end there. In fact, shortly before he was executed, he famously turned to his psychiatrist and asked, quote, tell me, after my head is chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. Following his beheading, his head was then bisected and his brain was removed in order to be studied. The rest of his head, however, was mummified, transferred to the United States, and put on display for the world to see. And last up today in the number one spot, Nabrok. In 17th century Iceland, there was a well-known witchcraft ritual where people would create pants out of the skin of the deceased in hopes of a better life for them and their families moving forward. Called nabrok, meaning corpse breeches, or more commonly referred to as necropants nowadays, the pants were made as a talisman to magically summon more money for whoever made them. However, there was a catch. The man in question had to have consented before death, and the deed could only be done after the burial had taken place. Once loved ones said their goodbyes, you were free to dig up the corpses and peel off the skin, being careful to keep it all in one piece. It was believed that no holes or tears could occur, otherwise the power of the necropants would be lost. But disgustingly, it didn't stop there. Once you had fashioned the pants and put them on your person, the ritual demanded you head out into the village and steal one coin from a destitute widow. From there, the coin was to be placed in the groin of the pants, along with a traditional Icelandic sigil for the ritual to be complete. There is only one known pair of such pants remaining today, and it's held in the Museum of Icelandic Sorcery and Witchcraft. And if you ask me, they are just about the most terrifying thing that I can think of. Well, there you have it guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.